In this video, we're going to be building a futuristic wind trap as an homage to the Dune universe. Alright, hold up. If you're not familiar with Dune, what the heck is a wind trap? The main setting of the story centers around the planet Arrakis, a desert planet where water and moisture is scarce and treasured. The colonists and natives of this world have erected these giant scoops in order to harvest the moisture from the air through condensation and reclaim it for use by the population. This type of structure has real-world counterparts. For example, take Chile's northern coast. Across the Atacama Desert, billowing banks of fog created here are harvested by its inhabitants with giant nets. Now, I've been talking to my friend Steve Hammond about this project for a while, and he was also interested in doing something related to Dune. If you're not familiar with Steve, he's been a long-time hobby nerd and builder, and a much better painter than me. Hey Steve, how's it going? Hey Narb. So all I have in my head for how we're going to tackle the project is the old school 2D sprites from the Dune 2000 game I played when I was younger. Dune 2000 and the original 1992 Dune 2, both games were my introduction to strategy games as a kid. <laughs> yeah, I think we talked about splitting this up in two. The front wind trap itself as well as some adjoining industrial clutter in the back to add some interest. These things harvest moisture and we'd need lots of power to do so. We'll be delineating the two sections by raising the front on a sort of concrete platform made from XPS foam, which I bevel in texture with an aluminum foil ball. When talking to Narb about this project, we discussed the main objective was to make a model that mimics the aesthetic and look of a small in-game sprite of a power plant of an almost 25-year-old game. We also wanted it to somehow look functional and also like a piece of wargaming terrain. Let's get on with the main shape. Getting that iconic sail or clothes iron look is going to be tricky. Check this out, if we can nail the initial shape with the wires, cladding over them with plastic card should be pretty straightforward. When Narb first showed me this, I was really impressed. I was mostly impressed at his skills to actually create this, because this is something where, as a terrain builder, some projects you look at and just say, I'd rather 3D print that, I'd rather just make it another way than actually craft it from scratch. It was actually pretty difficult to get this thing to stay symmetrical. The wiring underneath kept shifting as I added bits to one side versus the other. I think if you don't look too closely, it's going to be fine, but it's not going to be exact. So I know plastic card gets kind of expensive, but are you using a parking sign here? Uh, yeah, it's actually a great cheap source of large polystyrene sheets. You can get them at most hardware stores. The plan is to add some electronics inside later, so I won't be attaching it down just yet. Now it looks pretty rough. So we need to layer on panels and tech details to make this look scale appropriate and less like a boat. So I gotta ask, Narb, are you gonna use cheat codes here and use your laser engraver? Oh, you bet I will. The black EVA works well here and engraves the best out of all the colors. I actually burned through in one pass on some parts since I was calibrating for a lighter color in my profile. Okay, let's move on to the blinds and figure out how to get the light to shine through them. I need something to diffuse the light here. Honestly, I was at a loss for how to do the front of the wind trap, and then I thought of it as a set of blinds for a window, where maybe we can have some sort of translucent set of blinds, or make a portion detachable by magnets. We had to, we had to think of something to get creative here. Yeah, the blinds should be pretty straightforward. I'm just going to follow the same profile of the front of the wind trap, and lay out equally spaced bits of plastic card cut to length. For diffusing the light, I'll use this bit of semi-transparent plastic. This is the type of thing you'd put in your overhead lighting to diffuse the light, things like office buildings or recessed lighting. It's a pain to cut, but it's cheap in bulk from the hardware store. I like the pattern on this one, so I got it. Here I'm coating the inside of the structure in reflective tape, or aluminum foil would work too. It's gonna help the light bounce around and diffuse a bit more. All right, hear me out. The fact that these things are giant moisture traps got me thinking. They're likely using some sort of super cooled coils to condense the air. And what better way to represent that than to use some blue LEDs shining from inside? I believe Dune 2000 had this same effect. The inside of the wind traps glows blue in the game. I debated several options here and even tested out some remote controlled tea lights. In the end, I found this cheap but effective option on Amazon. 
is a remote controlled battery operated string of LEDs. The brightness is great and it even has this programmable pulsing glow effect, which is perfect. Nice, that's exactly what I was looking for. Okay, now that the main trap is looking good, let's focus on the backside. We need some water tanks to hold the moisture collected. I have a bunch of these caulking tubes I've been saving, so it's just a matter of cutting them to size and capping off the end. Gotta make sure to give it a good sanding so it sticks together and takes paint well. Using some parts from a soap dispenser and some pipe parts from my daughter's toy collection. That's starting to look like something. In the United States, in the state of Nevada, we have something called the Hoover Dam here. And that's something I went to before and they have these massive giant turbines inside, like the guts of the power plant. And these are actually perfect for some sort of doodads or sci-fi tech details that we can add to the wind trap to make it actually look functional. Oh, I got you. I printed off some tiny ones and some other tech looking greebles. We're gonna have some fun with these. Oh, by the way, you're gonna be painting this thing once we're done. I sort of suspected this and uh, I'm looking forward to it. However, I'm not storing it here because I live in the city, so I'm mailing this right back to you. Okay, I'll leave the bits unattached so they're a bit easier to paint them. I was having some trouble thinking of ways to line this tube part up while still leaving it detachable. I have a good amount of rare earth magnets, so whatever you send me, I'm going to try and tinker with it and see how we can improve it. That's brilliant. Okay, let's see here. It's going to need a place to connect. Uh, I take this soap bottle top, but it's going to need to sit flush with the water tank. You know, I forget where I saw this from, but if you take some sandpaper and curve it around the surface you're trying to match, you can sand down any plastic to a round profile. Soap dispenser bottles are proving to be the hero of this detailing work here. Such versatile connectors. So Narb, I assume you want to keep this piece of terrain for a few years. It would be nice if the battery pack was somehow accessible for the lights. What if we cut a hole in the side of the base here? We can hold it in place with Velcro or something. I'm going to give everything a coat of black gesso and then a quick spray prime. And we'll see how it goes together. Alright, let's see what this looks like. <laughs> Peeling back masking tape has to be the most satisfying thing. All right, Steve, this is how it comes together. I'm gonna put this thing in a box and it's coming your way. If you wanna see this thing painted up by the expert level God tier painter, Steve Famin, make sure you subscribe to his channel and tune into that video when it comes out. I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.